Hey everybody, let's make some baits today. When most people think about airbrushing or custom baits, they think about just that. Something that's been custom done on an airbrush, lots of different colors, layers, sometimes even using these really good hard molds. But what if you don't have that? You don't have that. You don't have any of these. All you have, nope, you don't have that. You might have that. But all you have are basics. Maybe you've got a beat up old lore, something like that. Or you're just starting out and you've scoured the web for blanks and now you're ready to paint your first lore. Well, if you don't have an airbrush, how do you do it? So we're gonna go step by step today from start to finish, and we're gonna end up with something that even a pro would be proud to throw. Okay, then let's get started. So what do you really need? Well, you're either gonna need a chipped up, dinged up, rusted out crankbait, or you can start with a lure blank. There's a number of places online to get lure blanks. Some of my favorites are Predator Bass Baits, Dakota Tackle, Lure Parts Online, Lure Color Studio, and Dinger Baits. For the purpose of this video, we're going to be using two basic baits that came from Lure Parts Online. We're going to do a medium diving crankbait, a shallow diving crankbait. Next thing you're going to need, if you don't have an airbrush, how do you do it? Pretty simple, very economical. Let's start out by going to the dollar store. From the dollar store, typically a Walmart that's going to have a one-stop shopping. You're going to pick up the colors and the patterns depending on what you need and for the purposes of this video we're going to be doing a crappie pattern. We're also going to be doing a two-tone like a citrus color. So the blanks you're going to get and I'm going to list the, um, the links below from recommendations on where to get your blanks from. That's going to take a few days in the mail. Next up, when you go shopping, the things that you can get from a store like a Walmart, split rings, standard eel claw, treble hooks, and for crankbaits, if you know nothing about crankbaits, the, the basic sizes, if you're going to do a 2.5, you're going to go with either a 4 or maybe even a 2, but for this one we're going to do a 4 for this medium diver, and a 6. A size 6 is a little bit smaller, a 4 is a little bit larger. Now, sizes run all the way across the board. So when you get into your upper end, because this is how I make my way, I do these for a living. So I'm gonna be using all different sizes, all different grades. Uh, some of the better ones are the truck cars. They're actually the most expensive, but we're not gonna need that. Walmart sells massive quantities. This is a 20 pack for about $3. The paints that you can get, also very inexpensive. This is basic nail polish. Don't be ashamed to go through and look. And then you're going to go with your basic. These are about $3.97 a piece. Um, super inexpensive. You get seven to a pack, so you have 14 brushes. And that's for your epoxy coating or your seals. Normally we would use epoxy. There's all different kinds. I, I do everything from art resin to these two-part epoxies right here, specifically made for lures. The problem with these is they have a tendency to yellow after a period of time. So I'm trying to shy away from those. I might do a, a basic coat on that. But let's get back to this. So we're going to start. I'm going to put these on the stand. Give me a second. Stay with me. I'll be right back. Now that we've selected everything, take the baits out of the package. And we're going to tape up the lips on them. The biggest thing to remember with these is that you really want to make sure all of this lip is covered. Underside as well. Basic painter's tape or masking tape works just fine. And just trim off the excess. And then you have. Now we're going to go ahead and do the back end of this lip here. Now we're ready to paint. 
We're going to do this one first. This is going to be a basic two-tone. All right, you want to shake that for about 15, 20 seconds. And one thing you have to remember about polish is that you have to work quickly. Because it will dry fast. Now that we've got our paper towels down, the next thing we're going to do is shake this paint again. And remember, we're going to do a citrus pattern going to be a basic blue and orange. We're going to put the lighter colors on first. Remembering to work very quickly with this paint. It's almost going to look translucent when you start to put it on. And we're just going to go through and do a quick coat. Make sure it's even. Make sure there's no drips. want to get it about halfway on the bottom side. Cool thing about this particular paint is if you don't get it too thick, it's going to be translucent. And just the most important thing to do is to make sure that the coat is even. You want to keep working that. Now depending on how much air you have. If you have a fan going, you want to be in a well-ventilated area. But depending on how much you have is how fast this is going to start to dry. And once it starts to dry, it gets sticky. And you'll be able to feel it in the brush because your brush won't run as smoothly across the bait. Remember to shake it. Shake it. can leave it sit there and once you have it most of the way open pick it up again you're gonna be a little more careful on this one just because if you overlap too much you're gonna get a really odd color down the side but we're gonna go back over it with the orange so this is specifically just to get the top coated. And then just kind of work that evenly. A little bit more right up top just to coat this even. And if it overlaps a little bit and it looks a little bit crazy on the first coat, that's okay because you're going to go back over it. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next scene. So now we have a very distinct two-tone, but we're going to clean this muck up in the middle of the bait to where it blends well. So now remember, we're working with this wet. We've already shaken this up pretty well. So we're going to take this and we're going to set this just like that. We're going to pour just a little bit onto the paper plate. Make sure we put that cap on real good. We're going to get our blue back out. We're going to pour just a little bit of that onto the paper plate. And now we're going to blend. So you remember these brushes that we talked about? I just pulled one out. It's got about a quarter of an inch bristle, fairly stiff. 
now we're just going to work that lighter color into the side of this bait. Now remember, always put your cap back on this polish because it will dry out quickly on you. And we just come and do the same thing up the side of this bait. Just ease that line out. So as you can see, we've added glitter to this bait. And that does a couple of things. If you're fishing in stained water, it's going to add that flash. It's going to key the fish in. as an added attractant. The other thing that it's going to do, because we're not using an airbrush tonight, any imperfections along this color change on the side of the bait, it's going to help cover that up as well. So as you can see, we now have a really good looking bait, two-tone, dark blue, glittery, orange on the belly. We need to let this sit overnight. We're not going to bake it. If we were airbrushing, you can contact heat it. That's usually how most airbrush paints dry. But for this, it's got to sit. So when we go to seal it, it should have sat for at least six hours, which is what we're going to do with this bait. So we're going to pick it back up at that point in the process. Okay, so let's take a look at our bait. It's dried. Looks pretty decent. And now we've got two things left to do. We've got to seal it, but before we do that, we need to put eyes on. Now, the last part of the puzzle, and I'm gonna leave you some links down below, somewhere down there, are eyes. And these happen to have come from Lure Parts Online. And they're very inexpensive. We're gonna, they're peel off, stick on. So we're gonna put these eyes on and then we're gonna clear coat. Get them in with your clear coat and then just face them forward. The pointy part of the eye is gonna go forward and the round part of the eye is not. And do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you point those eyes in the same direction so it doesn't look all crazy. You should pretty much be pointing forward. And now we have eyes. So let's clear coat. Normally when I'm clear coating a bait, I'm going to use three different things. But for the purposes of this video, if you're just beginning, you don't have an airbrush, you don't have the epoxy, what can you do? The best thing that you can possibly do, pretty much be pointing forward. And now, we have eyes. So let's clear coat. Normally when I'm clear coating a bait, I'm gonna use three different things. But for the purposes of this video, if you're just beginning, you don't have an airbrush, you don't have the epoxy, what can you do? The best thing that you can possibly do is to get a clear coat. You can use Rimmel. What I'd prefer to tell you to use is Sally Hansen and the reason that this is so much better than everything else out there is that they put nylon into this clear coat so it strengthens it it hardens it a lot faster and it's really easy to apply you want to go very evenly across the top The other cool thing about this, don't tell everybody because the secret will be out, is that when you do epoxy, most of the time, after a while, it's going to turn yellow, it'll fade, um, and the strength will wear down. Because unless you're a company like Strike King that can afford to use the most amazing epoxy out there, that lasts for a while, but even that's not a guarantee. 
you're going to chip and crack and yellow. So one really cool thing about this Sally Hansen polish and clear coat is that it doesn't yellow. Just a little bit more on the top and then we're going to let it sit and we'll apply one more coat to this and then we'll be done. Now my rule of thumb, and it's practical, works for most people, is that I like to let my baits cure for about a week before I throw them. I recommend that to people that are buying my baits as well. Alright, so here comes the last clear coat. Once we're finished this part of the process, the well, very last thing to do is to put on the uh, split rings and treble hooks. So we've painted, we've glittered, we've sealed it, and now we've got a pretty sharp looking bait. A couple of things left to do. first thing we need to do is go ahead and take care of this. Now this is simple enough. When you paint baits, you're going to get gunk and paint in the eyelets. Some of the easiest ways to do that is to grab a toothpick and run that toothpick through the eyelet, pushing all the paint out from the inside. Just go ahead and pull the rest of that paint out. Fairly simple process. Split ring pliers look like this. They have a little jaw hook and a short side and a longer side. Let's show you how that works. As I mentioned, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using these Eagle Claw split rings, size number two, and Eagle Claw red treble hooks, size number six, for this smaller bait. You want to line these up where you have just enough of a gap to push this on. Push it on just like this. And then start to work this split ring through the eyelet using your pliers to help guide you through. And you'll, you'll hear that snap just like you heard there. And this should move freely. If it doesn't move freely, then more than likely it's not on correctly or it's still kind of stuck or you might still have some excess paint on there. Take these split rings and your pliers Find that edge, that gap, open it up, and then take your treble hook, put it in between, and then just run it through. Make sure that you have the treble hook firmly in your hand. Last thing that you want is to get a treble hook through your fingers. Believe me, I've had it done. It is not fun. There you go. Just work that through. And the more you do this, the easier it's going to get. And here is your finished product. Well, that's about it for this video. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got about 12 hours worth of editing to do. Hey, Casey, you want to edit this for me? No? Okay. Y'all be good. Thanks. Have a great one.